What's up, guys, and welcome back to another Ghost Recon Phantoms weapon review, or Shemakura to all you Polish people out there. This time around, we have the Blaggard pack, and there are some real nice weapons in this pack, and then there are some really bad ones. And there are some weapons that are in between. Uh, there were some packs that just had really good weapons, like the Halloween pack. Uh, this isn't one of them. This is kind of a mixture. So, as usual, though, we'll proceed across, starting with Assault, then Recon, then Support. Starting with Assault, the Assault got a grip short-barreled ACRH. The ACRH SP Blaggard. Now, this has the second highest DPS of any Assault weapon after the F2000 Bodark. It's only a few points below it. And the advantage of this one, say, over the Bodark, is it has better control and slightly better armor piercing. Uh, it doesn't have the same recoil of the Bodark, and so it's much easier to control. It also has a legitimate burst mode that could come in handy. For example, uh, let's say... You, you know, this has a grip, and so without a bipod, it tends to be pretty unstable at long ranges. And you can just use the burst mode to compensate. It's a pretty good weapon. It's pretty good on maps like Attica or Tomps, of course, but there's nothing really special about this weapon. There's nothing that really just screams at you, wow, this is an amazing weapon. Now, had this had a bipod on it, I think we'd be talking a very different story here. But it doesn't. It has a grip and a short barrel, and it's locked into that. And, you know, that said, it's, it's okay. You know, like I said, it has the second best DPS after the Bodar. And pretty good armor piercing, 55%, 5% higher than the Bodar. Uh, that said, if I had to actually choose between the Bodar and this... I'd probably go with the Bodark ultimately, because not just because it has slightly better DPS, but because of the fire rate. I mean, that sometimes fire rate really helps. And if you can control it, and it's meant to be used at short range anyway, I actually think this is a better bet. I would say, with regards to this new weapon, the ACRH Laggard, if you already have the F2000 Bodark, eh, and you can control it, I personally wouldn't really bother much with the ACRH. I mean, it's not a bad weapon. But it doesn't feel particularly special, and it's okay. You know, it's just an, it's an okay weapon. If you're a good player, you'll be able to make good use of it, and you'll be able to do damage. But if you're a good player, you can use pretty much any weapon and make it work for you, right? You know, I was having a discussion with a former clown mate of mine the other night about the assault weapons and how there's never really a weapon that just is, screams at you such as, wow, this is it. The closest we ever came to that, I think, was the Asphalt Watchdogs, maybe the A94 Halloween edition. And as much as I love the AK-12 ACR, probably my go-to assault rifle even now, it's still not an amazing weapon. There's nothing about it apart from the uh, extra ammunition and the burst fire that really screams at you, amazing. So I think there's a reason for this. People argue because, you know, assault has so much health, right, 100 70 in this case that you can't you can't give them an advantage in terms of weapons well we'll see uh, I'm hoping that the next release if there is one and I'm sure there will be will be some really nice bipod maybe a medium or a short barrel I don't know we'll see but I wasn't very happy as you know with the Far Cry edition weapon not my taste I almost never use it and this is okay but on the other hand, there, there are better choices, like the F2000 Bodark. The 5% armor piercing, that extra armor piercing, doesn't really add up to much unless you have very high damage to begin with. And, of course, 46 isn't that much higher than 44 on the Bodark, so not a big deal. So really what you're looking at is a difference in control. You have 34 control with this gun versus 23. So that, that, that's the big difference, really, when you think about it. Uh, the DPS is slightly higher on the bow dark and a yeah, little less armor piercing, but whatever. Shotguns. I only tried this out a little bit. I kind of liked it. The Model 10 AH SP Blaggard. Uh, it is semi-automatic, but it has a very high fire rate. And most importantly, 
you can interrupt the reload process. You know, if you need, let's say someone's coming around the corner, reloading, boom. You know. Uh, good fire rate. The lack of ammunition, or rather the small clip size, is kind of a problem. But it's somewhat compensated for by the fact that you can reload uh, in between shots. You know, so the lack of accuracy is annoying at slightly longer ranges, as you can see. This is really a CQC shotgun. And I suppose you could argue that every shotgun is sort of CQC, and you'd be right, obviously. But there's some shotguns that you can make work on much longer range maps. Uh, for example, uh, I think to date still my favorite is the M3A1H SP ACR. It has the highest DPS of any shotgun. And yeah, it's, it's got a, a better range as well. You, know, you can, I'm not saying you're gonna be using this uh, at uh, you know, 60 meters, <laughs> you can try. Doesn't really work then anymore, but really uh, even at 30 meters, it still has some use, almost 30 meters. Whereas some of these others with the, with the only 11 accuracy, because remember, the difference between 11 accuracy on this and 16 is pretty huge. But for, uh, you can use it on toms, you can definitely use it on gallery, that's the one I use it on, and it, it's quite good. And it's got 10% armor piercing. Would have been nice if it had maybe 20, that would have been made it probably a pretty good weapon, but it's not bad. Also, nothing amazing, though. All right. So the assault weapons this time around are just, meh, they're okay. The shotgun is pretty good. The assault rifle is pretty good for a short barrel, short barrel grip weapon. Uh, but, you know, it's limited, so you don't want to, probably not going to use it on every map. But, you know, the assault weapons are, meh, they're okay. They're not terrible, but they're not also not very good. Recon weapons. Let's actually start with a sniper rifle. The sniper rifle... Uh, is a bolt action single shot has the fastest reload uh, of any bolt action to date faster than the M24H as a 90 and it's pretty good for a bolt action that is short barrel so you have a, a nice a pretty fast settle time and quite high damage for a uh, short barrel it's 149 put in magnum and you can body that's see I'm wearing I'm wearing ballistic right now I'm still getting 149 145 at 60 meters, not everyone is ballistic, and also 5.1 damage mitigation. So yeah, you can, even body shots are quite effective, obviously headshots are fatal. And yeah, this is definitely a good sniper rifle, especially if you like bolt action. Of course, the only disadvantage with this is it's got a fixed bipod, and I know a lot of people, including myself probably, when I do snipe, which is rare, prefer a grip, because grip has more versatility and doesn't really offer you too many disadvantages compared to a bipod. You have almost the same stability in cover as out of cover. And yeah. But you now that said, this is a pretty good bolt action sniper rifle and I would definitely recommend it if you like bolt action sniper rifles. This I'll be doing a review of a final review of all the weapons afterwards. Now, interestingly enough, Interestingly enough, what I didn't do this time around, I, I, I always get every weapon, right? I did not actually buy the PP-19H SP. And let me tell you why. This weapon is very, very similar to the AKS or the AK, AKR, however you want to put it, uh, the, um, the Special Edition AKS 200, only it lacks the advantages. It's, it's, it's just as unstable, even though technically it has... Uh, more stable, uh, technically has better control, but it's 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 got terrible accuracy, terrible recoil. I mean, at 60 meters, here's the test, folks. If you haven't gotten already, I would suggest you get this tracer ammo, which I'm looking for right now. Pink tracer ammo. Don't use this in a match; it's a waste. It doesn't do anything. But use it in the fire range to determine the spread and control of a weapon. So we're going to try this out with pink tracer ammo. Let's put it in. So this is only, what, about 10 meters? Yeah, it's okay, but even there you can see there's quite a spread. Let's try it at 30 meters standing up. 
I'm not really controlling it very much, you know, but look at that, that horrible spread. Look where everything just jumps around. Got lucky with some shots there. Okay, if you crouch, it's better. Try going longer ranges. I mean, this thing is, is, is a, a monster in the sense that it's terrible. Look at that. Now, let's, let's try to, I'm going to put on maximum control. And even then, it's just, it's so, it's just bad at long range. Okay, at shorter ranges, no problem, right? But, yeah, you can just see with the tracer ammo, the shots are not really firing where they're supposed to. Now, you can also, if you have this weapon, of course, uh, I do. Now, if you look at the, not everyone has this, but it's quite similar in feel to... I should sell this. I don't need this. Uh, to the AKS 200R. Only I feel I can control this better than the other one. Now let's put some pink tracer ammo in this. Do, 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 do. Where is the pink tracer? There we go. Yeah, so it's, it's very similar, and it's very unstable. Spread is pretty bad. But maybe it's because I'm more used to it. I don't know. But it, it feels uh, more controllable. And the DPS is nearly identical. Of course, you have less ammo in the clip. You have a legitimate burst mode, though. And look at that. You know, even at that range, just without Magnum, 151 headshot. Yeah, I mean, this is not a weapon, or the other one for that matter, the PP-19H Blackguard, that's meant to be used at long range. But honestly, compared to both, I think we have a, a winner, and that's definitely the MP5H. Let's just temporarily put in some pink tracer ammo again. If we can find the stuff. There we go. And we can see, we can test it. The pink tracer ammo is really useful, so I would suggest you use it testing weapons out. I mean, much, much tighter spread. Also has a burst mode that can be used at longer ranges. But yeah, you can just go full auto too at, at 60 meters, crouching at least, and more or less fine. You can't do that with the others. Now, I am using a short barrel, but so are the others. If you put in a long barrel on this thing, which I've used on occasion, then, yeah, then the accuracy and the control is just insane. You know? Yep, but I'm just using this to point out that this is still probably the best SMG available. The Vector Halloween is still really good, and I still like to use the M960H ACR just because it's got a lot of ammo. But yeah, as far as the actual SMG is concerned for the new one, it's it's just terrible. It's there's, I guess you could use it on Tomsk um, if you have a real hard on for CQC or whatever. You know, it does have a higher crit modifier than the uh, AKS uh, 200R, but, you know, who cares? It does sound pretty cool, I'll give it that, but... I think it's just, it's an impractical SMG. The only, I think the real advantage of this is the higher crit, the high damage per bullet, and the big clip size compared to a lot of other 53 shots. It's still pretty good. But, meh. Sniper rifle, bolt action's quite good. The SMG sucks. I, I wouldn't, I didn't buy it. I wouldn't recommend you buy the SMG. Maybe you want it anyway, go for it. Support. Now, I didn't bother getting the shotgun for support because I just don't really use shotguns for support anymore, only for salt, because salt's tougher, and you know, that's my reasoning. But if there's a gem in this weapon pack, it is this. This MG4H SP Blackguard is is easily the best LMG they've ever released. 
Now, when it first came out a few days ago, I thought, well, you know, we're going to get the, the Type 95 effect, right? I call it the you know, Mass Effect Type 95 effect, where everyone is going to be playing support and everyone is running around with this. Now, it might be too early to tell uh, because we just don't know. People haven't bought the weapon yet or whatever. But the fact is, that hasn't come to pass yet, and I think there's a reason. I do think this is an amazing, amazing weapon, all right? Amazing, amazing weapon. Uh, but one thing this does not have that the Type 95 SD had is the control. It, it's, it, I think it's very controllable for the most part, but it does require some effort. The difference between, I mean, this thing, first off, has the highest DPS in the game, period. There's no other weapon that beats it. It has, I've calculated, 756.6 DPS. That is 750, no, 755. No, 756.5 DPS, 6.5 higher DPS than the Halloween or the Power Black. In addition, it also has the 5% armor piercing. It has a pretty high damage per bullet, and it has an incredibly high fire rate. This thing just shreds through everything. Still very effective at, at 60 meters, full auto. Hey, if you have a problem, it has an amazing burst mode too. I would argue the best burst mode of any LMG to date. Just, uh, it has a legitimate burst mode that can be used at longer ranges. I mean, once I start going past 60 meters, I don't really feel too comfortable doing full auto, although I guess you could get away with it. Yeah, you can, but still. Uh, prefer burst mode, and yeah, it's quite good. This weapon really doesn't have any weaknesses. It's, it's the best weapon possibly in the game, and certainly the best weapon for support. Like I said, incredibly high DPS, quite high damage. Uh, the DPS is just its unbeatable. There's no weapon with a DPS. Incredible fire rate, pretty good damage per bullet. Uh, an amazing burst mode. I mean, the burst mode is just solid. It, it actually feels different. This burst mode actually feels different than simply fire tapping at full auto. The burst mode is more controlled. It doesn't have as much kick. So you just have a lot. You just have ton of tons of options. You can use. I've used this on map. You can use this gun on any map because of the versatility. I mean, obviously in CQC, this game, this gun, you just call it the shredder. There's no. If you're going up against someone with a with an assault rifle or an SMG, they're dead. And let you know, all things being equal, ping and latency and all that, it's just gonna shred them instantly. It's it's that powerful. But like I said. Out of cover, you do need to work for the control a bit. I mean, certainly in standing, standing requires, it's quite difficult, even at 30 meters standing. The power black has a grip, so it's a bit easier to do it. But once you start crouching, it's fine though, for the most part. And if you're used to, if you're used to controlling, say, the Halloween LMG, you're not gonna have too many problems with this. In fact, I'd argue that this is easier to control than the Halloween one. But uh, this this is just insane. But as I said, it, it's one of the reasons why back in the day, it's almost a year ago now, right? The Type 95, let's see if we can find it. The Type 95 Jungle SD, right? One of the reasons why this was such a popular weapon, apart from the high DPS and the armor piercing, whatever it was, it was... It was kind of a new weapon in the sense that you don't really need to control it. I mean, I'm, I'm not even controlling the weapon very much, and it's just... Yeah, it's kind of landing exactly exactly where it's, it's, it's going. So, and th that's actually pretty much true out of cover as well. So standing compared to, to uh, the MG4H, Blacker, is, you know, it's, it's a lot easier to control. This weapon is, you know, it's, it's easier to handle, and I think that's the reason why you're not going to see everyone using the MG4 SP Blackguard. A, lo a lot of people just don't want to bother with the recoil. That It does have some recoil, but it is an insanely effective weapon if you can control it. That said, uh, I think it's the best LMG they've ever released, but obviously some people are going to still use, for example, what do we have here? The MG36 uh, Rainbow. Uh, for obvious reasons, because yeah, because it's it's very it, this is a lot more controllable than the MG4 Black or Blackguard. It's, 
it's a lot more controllable. Doesn't have the same fire rate, has higher damage per bullet. Does not have a legitimate burst mode, although you can fire tap it. But for me, in the future, you know, until they release something even better, which I, I can't imagine what that would be, uh, this is the go-to LMG for me. I can't imagine really using any other one. Except maybe the AK for nostalgia's sake. Yeah, this thing is the shredder. And finally, I didn't talk, I already talked about the shotgun. Let's talk about the pistol. Uh, yeah, this, this is, um, this is the best pistol I think they've released to date. It's better than the Judge because it actually has range, very high damage, 60% armor piercing. I mean, look at those headshots. The headshots, I mean, you can actually fire it at a little bit of range, 102. I, I mean, this thing can kill enemies. The only 104, 204 headshots. And even at 30 meters, you're, you can still get... 167 crit shot, I mean headshot, that'll KO everything except some assaults, right? It's still quite accurate at 30 meters. Obviously at 60 meters, it's going to not be that great, but, you know, who cares? You're not using a pistol at 60, but up to 30 meters, this thing is, is beastly. And certainly in CQC situations, you know... You're going to be able to take out enemies very quickly. I, I would highly recommend getting this wild boar pistol. Sounds really cool, too. Wild boars always looked awesome. It's got the armor piercing. It's got the damage. And it's got better fire rate than the old wild boar. So, 206 headshot with a fucking pistol. Yeah, this is uh, quite nice. So, let's review all the weapons again. For assaults, you know, the assault weapons are really a matter of preference. If you like collecting weapons for the sake of collecting weapons, yeah, buy the assault weapons. The shotgun's okay. The assault rifle is okay. They're not bad, but they're also not really that good. They're just okay. Recon, the, uh, the sniper rifle is quite good. I would recommend getting it, even though it has a bipod. But yeah, it's got a very uh, fast reload rate. And damage is quite good for short barrel and pretty good armor piercing. And yeah, it's quite a nice one. <laughs> don't bother with the SMG. Possibly the worst SMG they've... Uh, I don't even have it, like I said. Possibly the worst SMG that they've released to date. This thing... The lack of control and accuracy really makes it... Uh, I mean, yeah, you can use it, but why would you bother when there are better choices? It's just because it's a new weapon? I don't know. Not even I'm going to do that. But who knows? Maybe I'll end up getting it and I'll end up using it. But it's not its not really a solid weapon, I think. You know, compared to a lot of others. Uh, so, and then support. Yeah, okay, shotgun I already talked about. It's okay, but if you're going to get any weapon and you don't, you know, you can't afford the others or don't want to spend the money, get this weapon. <laughs> this thing is, it's the shredder. You know, it's, it's... It's just really, really good. The burst mode is exceptional, I think, in my opinion. It's probably one of the best features. And that's on top of having the highest DPS in the game. Remember, you can burst you can burst fine at 100 meters and still get headshots. Really, really effective. Well, of course, it doesn't have the same accuracy as a lot of weapons, like assault rifles, but... It's I mean, you're not going to be using this at 100 meters, ideally. CQC, Tomsk, etc. Forget it. This thing is just going to shred everything. Yeah, out of cover. A little bit of, you know, you have to control it. But, I mean, that's not that difficult. Certainly, at 60 meters, controlling out of cover is, it can be difficult. But it's still possible. So, yeah. If there's any weapon in this pack, or any two weapons, the Wild Boar Pistol, the best pistol they've released, in my opinion, and the MG4H SP Blagger, definitely the way to go. So those are my thoughts, my recommendations, just my opinions. You might feel differently. You might think that the PP19H is amazing. And if you feel that way, then yeah, by all means, go for it and, you know, have fun with it and whatever. But I might end up getting it. I might not. It, it just, it feels just really weird and doesn't feel good. So anyway. I'm going to wrap it up here for here, uh, folks, and I will see you guys the next time for another weapons review. 
And yeah, maybe one day they'll actually release those maps out of beta and be actual maps, but we'll see. So until the next time, everyone take care and don't forget to say your kurva. <laughs>